In this video, I'm going to be doing a taste testing of a batch of pink grapefruit wine that I made eight months ago. Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Now then, there are no new members at the time of this video, and also we're still looking for uh, donations to replace my cell phone with a real camera, and you can find the link to the PayPal account uh, in the comment section below. Okay, let's, uh, let's get right to this one. Now then, with this particular batch of wine, this was made during my very first live stream eight months ago. Well, live stream, kind of, sort of. It was more of a stop motion live stream. Uh, this is what happens when you use older equipment. You just have to make do with uh, older type flaws. However, we've moved on since then. New equipment, more smoother live streams. And we are now going to do the results of that very first live stream, which was a pink grapefruit wine made from store-bought grapefruit juice. Uh, on the onset, I can say that uh, the AVB for this particular wine ended up being 14.4%. It has already been back sweetened. In fact, I think I used this wine when I did my degassing video when I was able to finally purchase my first degassing wine. So it hasn't been bottled for that long or that length of time. Uh, I can say that it is definitely cloudy. I mean, it's not like milky or anything like that, but there's a definite haze in there. This this. Uh, pink grapefruit wine just refused to clear up. I mean, no matter, I don't think no matter how long I would have waited for it, it was just going to have a haze in it no matter what. And I do believe I used a pectin enzyme uh, uh, afterwards to make this wine, so that didn't help. Uh, but to get right to it, let's get right to it. Uh, trusty corkscrew. My <laughs> everyday wine glasses. And let's see what we got here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I'm not seeing any effervescence, so there's no fizz. <laughs> degassing was done properly in this case. <laughs> yeah, hey, for my new degassing one. That's what we have here. Mm, we'll make this a small glass. It's it's still kind of early. <laughs> All right. You can smell the grapefruit, which is kind of a good thing because normally with uh, the uh, lighter style country wines, uh, <laughs> sometimes smelling that fruit is, is kind of hard to do over the smell of the alcohol. Speaking of which, Yeah, at 14.4%. Yep, 14.4%. Um, you can you can smell the alcohol. Uh, the alcohol level ended up being as high as it was because I did use the uh, uh, step back sweetening method where when it finally went dry and the, uh, the uh, hydrometer reading was reading at uh, 0.990, uh, that's when I started adding sugar in, in periodic increments uh, to uh, uh, overpower the wine yeast that I was using at the time and ultimately ended up uh, being able to uh, sweeten it as much as I like without uh, restarting fermentation. Uh, so yeah, for it to end up at a low 14.4% instead of the usual 16 to 18% plus, <laughs> uh, I think that worked out quite well. Let's see. Well, you don't know till you taste it. You know, you can taste the grapefruit. I mean, it, it, it's not a, it's not an overpowering. <laughs> there's that back end taste of grapefruit that comes through, but it's not overpowering. Um,
Yeah. It's just like eating grapefruit. I mean, there's no real uh, diminishing of the uh, of the taste. It's like you've got a. It's like you've got a. Uh, a grapefruit sitting in front of you, you sprinkled a little sugar, scooped it up, and they started chewing down on it. That's pretty much exactly what it tastes like. Uh, surprising. Uh, it's a bit, in terms of back sweetening, the way I did it, uh, the way I ended up uh, before I bottled it, it's just, uh, it's just a touch on the on the dry side. I mean, it's not it's not a dry wine. Semi, somewhere between um, semi-dry and well, just a tad notch be below semi-dry, which is not bad. This could be done sweet as well. One moment. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I think I like this. Um, at eight months, the. Uh, uh, the usual harshness that you have with wines that are that are done that are, you've seen me taste at the six month mark, a lot of this has gone away. Uh, it's a much more uh, smoother drinking experience, <laughs> and with this one, for this one is not bad. Um, I've seen some comments, even on uh, uh, the video where I did this particular uh, uh, video, uh, where people have indicated that they've had difficulty getting a, a citrus wine uh, to come out. Uh, you saw me making this one, and I will have a link back to the original video. And while I'm on that line, I don't think I'm going to be making any changes to the ingredients list in the original video. I think the way I made it was just fine. Um, no, I mean, once it went into primary fermentation and periodic rackings over, uh, over the course of the last several months, that's all I did to it. I mean, there was nothing, nothing special in terms of making this wine. In fact, yeah, I know it's a small pour. I'm only doing a small pour for the purpose of this video. But once this video is over with, <laughs> I think I'm going to fill this glass up. <laughs> I think this would be pretty good. I mean, this is at room temperature. Uh, I think this would be pretty good cold as a cold wine. Uh, I think it's really going to be good at the 12 month mark, but at eight months and I've got, well, I made five bottles. Of course, this one, this one probably be good, will be dealt with today, but the, the remaining four, uh, saving that one for the one year tasting, um, the other, the other three, might not make it to the 12 month mark. Hmm. It's got that, it's got that uh, little slightly sharp tang of grapefruit at the end, but you can also tell that the, the malolactic fermentation has not yet fully been complete. A little bit more aging, I think would do it. I think aging in the bottle uh, we'll definitely take care of that. Uh, it's getting to the, getting to the point where, uh, since I've now got additional carboys uh, and my wines are now bulk aging uh, for more than the six months that I had been doing these tastings at, uh, more than likely you'll probably see me doing a lot more seven, eight, nine months if I if I just forget about it. But uh, seven or eight month tastings, I think, would probably are going to become the norm. Uh, six months. I mean, at six months, there have only been like two or three wines where I can actually say that uh, those wines were fully drinkable at that point in time. More time, yeah, would be beneficial. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to start changing that to the seven, eight month tastings. Uh, damn, this one actually was pretty tasty. Definitely a lot better than my orange wine. Uh, I had a second chance of doing a, or I knew a, a video on it. Okay, if you just notice a slight glitch in the uh, the video while I was talking about the orange wine, it's because the uh, cell phone camera uh, stops recording after about 10 minutes, uh, which means that I have to, without knowing it, uh, babble on for the next five minutes before I realized that, uh, okay, I finished saying what I was going to say and looked at the camera and realized that it stopped. 
this is why uh, I really do need to get that, uh, replace this cell phone with a, with a real camera. Uh, which is why, again, I've got a link in the comment section uh, that points to my PayPal account, the channel's PayPal account, uh, to solicit donations for the, uh, for the new camera. Which, if I didn't say it at the first part of this video, I'm about one quarter of the way there to, uh, to purchase this camera. I figure another three, maybe four months uh, before that can happen. And it pretty much all depends on you. But I think what I was saying, if I can recollect my thoughts, because <laughs> I was on a roll, <laughs> was that, uh, again, after with the orange wine video uh, tasting, uh, 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 the flavors tend to mellow out a bit more. So that if you uh, just simply if your wine, if your wine tastes like, well, somewhat, I don't want to say it tastes like crap. Yeah, I will say that. Uh, just give it more time because the wine will have a, a more time to develop more, more, more flavorful characteristics that over time will come become uh, quite tasty. Uh, again, uh, strawberry wine from store bought grapefruit juice. Is this something that I would make again? Yeah, I think I would. This is not bad. Uh, again, I like the fact that the flavor of this wine is just like having a, 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 a half a grapefruit sitting in a bowl with a little sugar sprinkled on top. I mean, it, it tastes exactly like that, except uh, with the addition of the 14.4% uh, alcohol content that mine ended up being. Uh, but there we go. Uh, again, pink grapefruit wine, eight, month, eight months into the process. There we go. Is it something I would make again? <laughs> Heck yeah. It definitely is something that I'm going to pour more of. <laughs> Probably will not finish this off by the end of tonight <laughs> if it goes that far, but cheers. Here we go. Uh, so again, one last time, uh, donations being accepted through my uh, channel's PayPal account. Uh, I'd appreciate it uh, to avoid any further glitches with, uh, with the video timing out after a certain period of time. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video.